In today's video, why your fat loss diet is making you fatter. Hey guys, what's going on? Paul Ravella from ProPhysique.com and I have a really cool video for you today and it comes from the Instagram direct message per usual. So if you're not following my Instagram, you can go there at Paul Ravella, direct message me questions. I try to answer them in um, the best way that I know how and uh, I really appreciate the great questions from you guys. And today's video is on the topic of dieting, fat loss, adjusting calories, cardio, um, and how to do that over a lifespan with the specific goal of explaining to you how being in a fat loss diet can make you fatter over time. And I think a lot of times we can say, well, we have a real problem with fat loss. I don't think we have a problem with fat loss. I've seen lots of people have lots of success with fat loss. What we have a problem with is body fat regain. And that's because we don't really understand what's going on with the body and how to account for it. So let's get into it. Let's try to keep it brief today. I'm gonna to give you a little bit of visual representation, a little bit of data. And I'm gonna show you the question that I got today. So here's the question from my man on Instagram. Basic story, he lost a lot of weight over a six month period. And over that six month period, he had his calories at 1800. So during the course of that time, he lost a lot of weight, um, was feeling good about himself, got a girlfriend, got into a relationship. When a relationship happens, we've all been there, right? You go, you go to the gym every day, you meet a girlfriend, well, you start to change that dynamic, you start going out to eat more, you're going out drinking, you're hanging out with her friends, a little bit less about yourself, more about the relationship, and before you know it, body weight is back to where it was. Well, my man recognized there was a problem and put himself back on a caloric restriction. So he thought, starting at 2,400 calories. Well, he gained weight. How could that be? Well, I'm gonna show you how that can be. I'm gonna show you how to address it. And first of all, congrats on asking me a question that's probably difficult, okay? So I know it's hard to lose weight and sometimes we can feel stuck and maybe even a little bit ashamed, so I wanna help address that issue. So let's talk about what happens when we diet, okay? When you put yourself on a caloric restriction, you are creating a calorie gap. Now, initially, whatever that calorie gap is, that's going to allow your body to lose body fat because you're going to be taking in less calories than you are burning and your body is going to preferentially use fat stores as energy. So let's say that your basal metabolic rate and your calories burned per day were at 3000 at this time when you started and you put yourself on an 1800 calorie diet. You were doing cardio 30 minutes a couple days a week. So you were really calorie restricting. Let's say you might've been at more than a thousand calorie per day deficit, right? You were really losing rapidly, but because of the momentum and how good it felt, you might've just stuck with it for the whole time. Even though you were hungry, you just noticed the belt loosening, you noticed changes, people started saying things to you. And so the willpower to stick to a diet that is, Difficult can be eased when outside factors are starting to influence you. So we're going to discuss this. So over time, even though your basal metabolic rate was up around 3000, and these are all just estimates and guesses. These are not based on anything other than my coaching experience. When you brought your calories down to 1800, that worked great for a while, right? You brought your calories down, you got your cardio up, you had a huge caloric deficit, but what happens over time, is the basal metabolic rate or your body's metabolism. And metabolism is simply defined as all the caloric processes in our bodies, all the chemical processes in our bodies when we ingest calories and how we expend them, okay? That is our metabolic rate. So those processes adapt, they are adaptive. Our metabolism is dynamic, it is not static. So when you reduce calories or increase calorie expenditure, your body becomes more efficient it can do the same amount of work with less calories. Sounds like a good problem to have. Efficiency, it is a good problem for survival. It is not a great problem to have for fat loss, okay? So what happens is, as you keep your calories at this low level, and we'll get into the graph here in just a second, your basal metabolic rate comes down. And as your basal metabolic rate comes down, fat loss slows and slows. You also have less body fat to lose, right? So as it's slowing and you have less body fat and you reach your your goal, well, 
What do most of us do? Well, we celebrate, we go back to our old ways, um, and we just feel like anytime we want to lose that weight, we can just go back on our magic diet. But not so fast. We have to pay attention to our body's metabolism, how many calories we're taking in, how much cardio we're doing. That is now your norm. And if that seems scary to you, well, is it scarier than putting all the body fat back on and that being the norm? Because that's what's happened to you, my friend. So I'm going to go to the board and let's dissect what's going on. So we're going to talk about the axes here, okay? So we're going to start first with body weight. This is basal metabolic rate and this is calories. Now, when we first started, his body weight was high and he started his calories very low. And his basal metabolic rate was in a good spot. So over time, he kept his calories very low. And his basal metabolic rate adapted and adapted and adapted to here. His body weight adapted and adapted and adapted to here. So at the six month point, his calories hadn't changed a lot, but his basal metabolic rate had adapted and his body weight had adapted. This is when he met someone, a girlfriend. Now, you go out to eat. You take in a large amount of calories. What happens? Body weight shoots up. Basal metabolic rate does not because the next day you bring your calories back down. So a couple days later, you go out drinking. Calories go up for the day. Body weight goes up for the day. Again, you repeat this pattern of overeating and undereating. Now the difference is because your basal metabolic rate is down here, when you overeat, you store body fat rapidly, okay? And that leaves us at a place where you are now. Your basal metabolic rate is still low, okay? Your calories, even though they're taking in higher, there's now an energy gap. That energy gap is called a surplus. That's why you gain weight. And your body weight is now higher than when you started or roughly the same. So even though your weight is roughly the same as when you started this process, your metabolic rate is down, okay? So to see a weight loss, you see the gap here. You need to bring calories back down or create a deficit with cardio. So a logical question after looking at that is, hey Paul, why when we overeat do we store body fat quickly? Well, the body is very adept at keeping us at our level playing field. It likes something we call the body fat set point theory. It likes to keep body fat in the same range. So when you restrict calories and do cardio for long periods of time, you're basically setting your body up so that it can store body fat more rapid than it would if you just kept your calories high, okay? Your meta metabolism is slowing down. Your gut can actually extract more calories from food than it could previously. This is what I meant when I said efficiency. Your body is becoming efficient at storing energy. Great for survival, terrible for those of us who want to look good in a pair of board shorts or a bikini. So this process, if you repeat this over and over, restrict calories for a long period of time, drop body fat, drop body weight, overeat for a short period of time, put all the weight back on, and then go back, you can see how this can become a terrible cycle. You are now reducing, reducing, reducing your met metabolism while increasing your body weight over time. This is where we get into dieting actually can leave you fatter. Body fat overshooting, where it's a phenomenon where when we start a diet, we lose all the weight, then we body fat shoot past that, okay? There are some mechanisms in place in the human body that make it possible to add new body fat cells. I know we always hear that we have the same amount and they're always just uh, big or small, but we've actually seen research of new body fat cells after extreme diet. So what do we do? Well, the real answer to that is we have to bring calories back up. We have to get our metabolism back working. Those overeating, binging type sessions you have where you go out drinking and eating, those scare you, they're not the norm. But if you maintained those for a while, your metabolism would pop back up. And yes, when you overeat, there is a short acute change to your metabolic rate. But by not sustaining those higher calories, it comes back down. Oh, no, it may be trending up over time and increasing if you're consistently overeating. However, when you're gaining body fat, it's not really a good feeling. And I find most people that go through these dieting phases start to restrict overeat, restrict overeat. They feel like that's the balance. Well, what we need to do is repair the metabolism, bring calories back up, and if we do it in a consistent manner from the point where we lost body fat without the overeating, it's possible to maintain a leaner physique and bring calories back up. 
but this takes a lot of work, okay? We call this a reverse diet. We call this metabolic building, whatever you wanna discuss it. Basically, if you want to avoid getting fatter when you diet, you have to pay attention and have a plan post diet, okay? Going in and starting with that knowledge will really help the process after. Hopefully that was helpful guys. If you would like more information on some of the things I talked about, I have a video, I'll put it in the description below, on how to fix your metabolism. It discusses this process a little more in depth. I also have a video with a client who went through years of yo-yo dieting, was stuck at a body weight well over what she started her dieting at, and a metabolism that was not able to lose any more weight. So what did we do? We did the reverse diet. So I'll put Jamie's video below. Now, I have lots of cases like this, but Jamie is just someone that happens to live local to me. So hopefully those videos help you out, guys. If you have questions about the process, and I can go in more in depth, let me know in the comments below, and hopefully you guys are having an awesome day, and I'll talk to you tomorrow. I'm not so